This video will show you how to use Microsoft Excel to complete your lab assignment for using correlation and regression analyses. So I'm assuming that you already have the data analysis tool pack installed. If you do not have it installed, please refer to the lab two tutorial video and that will show you how to get the data analysis tool pack to do correlation and regression. So this data set is hypothetical, but it represents a realistic scenario in the workplace where somebody wants to implement a new selection test, specifically a sales ability test score, but before they start to use it for new hires, they want to make sure that it actually predicts performance. So in this case, performance is reams of paper sold among employees at Dunder Mifflin. You can tell I'm a fan of The Office. So be it. All right. Anyways, so in addition to making sure that whatever this selection test is going to be predicts some measure of performance, employers often want to make sure that it predicts performance above and beyond a current selection test that's already being used. And in this example, let's say that they're currently using an extroversion scale score. So they give them a measure of extroversion which is just a personality characteristic that represents being outgoing and sociable and is probably a predictor of good sales ability. So let's say that we are trying to make sure not only that the sales ability test predicts the reams of paper sold, which is our measure of performance, but that it predicts reams of paper sold above and beyond this extroversion scale score that's already being used. So that'll be the premise of today's lab assignment. Oh, and kind of just a caveat too, higher scores represent more of whatever is being measured. So higher scores represent better sales ability, higher scores represent more extroversion, and of course higher scores represent more reams of paper sold. Also, this is X, our independent variable, this is Y, our dependent variable, and then Z is going to be that third variable that we use when we talk about a partial correlation that we think may actually inflate the observed relationship between X and Y. So the first question asks you to construct a scatter plot for sales ability and reams of paper sold in Excel. So let's go ahead and do that. And the reason we're doing that is to get a visual on the observed relationship between these two variables in our data. So between sales ability and reams of paper. So let's go ahead and copy our data. So left click, control C to copy, then go into Excel. And you can just highlight the top cell here and hit control V and our data is right there. And remember, we are going to be constructing a scatter plot looking at the relationship between sales ability test scores and reams of paper sold. So the first thing I want to do is highlight the data that I want to construct a scatter plot for. So sales ability test scores, and if I, oop, let's just highlight that. And now I can highlight this as well if I hold down the control key and then highlight it, and it'll highlight both of those. Now I want to go up to the Insert tab and select Scatter, and then just the basic scatter plot with only markers. Click it. Now this gives us a scatter plot, but it's not in the format that I like to see. So I want you to change the format so that you can label both axes by selecting the first format here, Layout 1. Now go ahead and delete both of these pieces. Just click on it hit delete, click, delete. Now make sure that you label your axes correctly. So this x-axis is for sales ability, so I'm going to go ahead and label that. So just click it and then highlight axis title and type in sales ability test score. And then this axis is for our, our y variable or our dependent variable in this case which is reams of paper sold, so I'm going to relabel that. Reams of paper sold. Okay, now copy and paste this into your lab document. Be careful that you don't just highlight this part. Make sure that you click so that the whole entire graph is highlighted. So if you click and you see a box around just your scatter plot, Make sure that you don't copy and paste that and click outside of that so the whole thing is pasted. So I highlight it, hit control C. Then I go into my lab document under number one and I'm going to paste special 
So make sure that the Home tab is selected, then click the arrow under Paste, Enhance Meta File. And I'm going to go ahead and shrink it a little bit. All right. So now I can look at this picture and make a prediction about the strength and direction of the correlation. So I'm not going to go through that, but I will tell you as a kind of a hint, you can draw a circle around your data points to see how linear it is, you know, how close the dots form a linear pattern, which will tell you about the strength. And then if it goes upward or downward, we'll tell you about the direction. And then I just want you to explain that in terms of what you see here. Number three asks you to construct a scatter plot for the extraversion scale scores and reams of paper sold. So now we are going to be treating this extraversion scale scores as the predictor or the independent variable or the X variable. And we're still treating reams of paper sold as our Y or our dependent variable. So let's go ahead and do that in Excel. So now I'm going to be looking at extraversion and reams of paper. Just highlight both of those. You don't have to do the control function because they're next to each other. And then go to insert, scatter, scatter plot. Now it put it right above or right on top of the one we just created. So we can just move that. So put your cursor over the new chart. Make sure that you have the four arrows. Click and drag so that you have both of them there. Now I'm going to change the formatting a bit like I did before. So with layout one, I'm going to delete this. So just highlight those and click delete. And then label my axes. So now this one, remember, we selected extraversion scale score as our X variable here. So extraversion scale score is what we want to label our X axis. And then our Y axis, again, is reams of paper sold. Now you want to copy it, so highlight it, make sure that it doesn't look like this, but it looks like this. Hit Control C, then go into your lab document and paste special. And I'm going to shrink it a little bit. Done. Same thing as before. Look at the shape of the scatter plot, so you know, kind of draw a circle around it to then predict the strength and direction of the relationship between extraversion and reams of paper sold. Make sure that you explain your rationale behind that. Also keep in mind, we are going to be calculating with Excel the correlation coefficients. And if the correlation coefficient that we calculate doesn't match your prediction, that's totally OK. Just make sure that your explanation matches your prediction. That's all I'm really looking for there. So let's go ahead and get to it. Let's use Microsoft Excel to calculate the correlation coefficients among all three of the variables in our hypothetical data here. So let's go ahead and go to Excel. Make sure that you select the Data Analysis tab, then Data Analysis, and Correlation. And correlation is towards the top of this list, as long as your list looks like mine, which I think it should. So make sure Correlation is selected. Click OK. Now we want to highlight all of our data because remember in the lab, it's asking us for the correlation coefficients among salesability, reams of paper, and extraversion. Now keep in mind, correlation coefficients are just for two variables. But we can highlight all of these variables in Excel and it'll give us the correlation between salesability and reams of paper, salesability and extraversion, and reams of paper and extraversion in one single analysis. So I'll show you how that works. So back to our correlation analysis again. We selected data analysis, correlation, highlight all of your data. Make sure that you check this box that says labels in first row. That tells Excel that the labels are in the first row, as you might guess. Then make sure you name your worksheet and make sure that new worksheet is selected. Let's just call this what it is, correlation, and click OK. Now it's formed a new tab, which has your correlation analysis. Before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of our numbers, right click, go to Format Cells, select Number, and let's go ahead and have it round to the thousandth place for us, so three decimal places, and click OK. And to make sure that you can see everything in each cell, 
I'm going to go with between each different cell. Make sure that double headed arrow appears, double click. And now you can see everything that you need to see. Then just highlight all of this, hit control C, go into your lab assignment. I'm going to go ahead and put this on another page by hitting control and enter at the same time or I could have done insert page break whichever way you want to go and I'm going to paste this correlation coefficient output so paste special picture enhanced meta file and there we go now these questions are going to ask you for the correlation coefficient between specific variables and this number six between sales ability test scores and reams of paper sold. I'll show you how to interpret this. So you want to find where the two variables meet. So here's sales ability test score. Here's reams of paper sold. The correlation there is 0 0.705. Again, where these two meet? Well, here's reams of paper sold right here. And here is sales ability test scores right here. They meet here. Now, you could also try to say, okay, well, sales ability test scores and reams of paper sold. Oh, there's nothing there. That's just the nature of the way that this table is set up. Just find where those two meet and you actually have a correlation coefficient. I also want to note that the correlation between any variable in itself is 1 because it's perfectly consistent with itself. And remember, that's the strongest correlation you can have is 1. So that's why there's these 1's along the diagonal here because x with x, sales ability with sales ability, extraversion with extraversion, reams of paper with reams of paper, all perfect correlation because it's just looking at the variable with itself. Let's go ahead and do all these correlations just to make sure that you understand how to get the correlation coefficients from this table. So the next one is saying Based on the output, what is the correlation coefficient between sales ability test scores and extraversion? So now let's look sales ability test scores and extraversion. Those two meet here. That correlation is 0 0.661. 0 0.661. The next one is between extraversion and reams of paper sold. So let's see. Um, well, here we're not looking at sales ability anymore, extraversion, and then reams of paper sold. They meet here. 0.538 is that correlation. 0.538. Now, I'm also asking you to tell me about the strength and the direction of the relationship, which you should be able to do without my help, and to find our crit, and then tell me if that correlation is significant. Now, we're assuming a one tailed test. Specifically, we're assuming positive correlations because we expect that higher sales ability test scores will be correlated with or will be related to higher extraversion and higher sales ability test scores will be related to more reams of paper sold and more extraversion will be related to more reams of paper sold. So we're assuming a one-tailed test expecting a positive correlation. So your critical value will be a positive value. And also your critical value will be the same for each one of these because we have the same degrees of freedom so n minus 2 n being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 minus 2 degrees of freedom is 13 and we have a one tailed test off level of 0.05 so you'll find that critical value in your table you'll have the same critical value for all three and then tell me if it's significant based on that critical value and when I say it's significant, I mean the actual correlation coefficient for the specific problem. Now you'll see an extra credit here. I want you to calculate the partial correlation coefficient. And all these values, the RXY, RXZ, RYZ, come from here. You've already got them. And just be mindful that for these, you're squaring this correlation and then subtracting that from 1. And then make sure you keep that square root there and then solve for it at the end. And then I want you to tell me if, based on your calculations, if the relationship between sales ability and extraversion and reams of paper sold and extraversion inflates this observed relationship between sales ability and reams of paper sold. And you should know how to do that based on what we talked about in class and what's on the textbook. Basically, you just want to see if 
after you control for extroversion, if this observed relationship between reams of paper sold and sales ability test scores decreases or becomes closer to one. Then you can see if it's still significant by using the same degrees of freedom, one tailed test, same critical value essentially that you used before to see if after we control for extroversion is the relationship between sales ability test scores and reams of paper sold still significant. Now let's do number nine. So we're going to perform a regression analysis just looking at the sales ability test scores as a predictor of reams of paper sold. So let's go to Excel. And let's go back to sheet one, which has our data. Make sure that you have the data analysis tab selected. Go to data analysis, select regression, which is towards the bottom of the data analysis tools, and then click OK. So this input Y range, this is our dependent variables range. So reams of paper sold is our dependent variable. And then input X range, we want to look at sales ability test scores. Now you can do multiple regression in Excel. I would just highlight both of these for the input X range, but we aren't going to go there. For now, we're just going to do regression with a single independent variable. Make sure that labels is selected and then name this new worksheet regression. And then click OK. Now before I do anything, I want to have Excel round the values that I'm interested in to the thousands place. So I'm going to highlight all of these numbers. Right click, format cells, number, three decimal places, click OK. And I'll do the same thing for the analysis of regression values. So highlight them all, right click, format cells, number, three decimal places, and OK. Now let's go ahead and do the double click between each column so that the entire contents of the cell is presented. And let's go ahead and copy and paste the analysis of regression and the coefficients from the regression analysis. So just highlight all this. Quick note, this is your R squared. So this tells us that, let's see, 49.7% of the variability in sales or numbers of reams of paper sold can be predicted by sales ability test scores. Let's not worry about the adjusted R squared or the standard error. Here's a number of observations. And here is the correlation coefficient between those two variables, which if you look at correlation, it's the same exact thing. Now, if we had multiple predictors or multiple independent variables here, then we would see a different R here. But since we just have one predictor, it matches the actual correlation coefficient. Let's go ahead and hit Control C. See the little dancing line? means we've copied this and then let's paste it into our lab. I'm going to go ahead and put this on a new page by holding down control and hitting enter. And then I'm going to paste this special. There we go. So I'll show you how to interpret this. All right, so let's go down here. So it says write the regression equation for predicting reams of paper sold using sales ability test scores. So this is akin to the B, X plus A. Well, B is your coefficient for your independent variable. So B is 5.060, 5.060. Now, you keep X because remember, we can plug any value of X that we want to into this equation to figure out what would be the predicted y based on x? Or in other words, what would we predict their number of reams of paper sold in a month to be based on their sales ability test scores, which is x. Now, a is our constant. And here, our constant is the coefficient for the intercept. So remember, the constant is also referred to as the y-intercept, and that comes from here. Now, because we are adding this coefficient, we can leave this plus negative 2.16.740, or we can just change this plus to a minus, since the coefficient is negative, and just add it there, 
6.740. So now for this part, number 11, based on the regression equation, what is the predicted number of reams of paper sold, which is what this y hat represents, in a month for someone who scores an 85 on the sales ability test, which is x. So I want you to show your work, and you'll literally just copy so control C and then paste this, insert 85 for X, and then do the math to find out how many reams of paper would we expect somebody to sell in a month if they got an 85 on the sales ability test. Okay, and for number 12, I want you to tell me if the sales ability test scores are a significant predictor of reams of paper sold. And how do you know based on the ANOVA, the analysis of regression? So you're going to just compare the p-value, which is the significance of f, to our alpha level and use the same criteria that we've always used before. So remember, if the p is low, reject the hoe. So that's what I want you to do here. Now, I'm not having you look at the p-value for each individual predictor because there's only one predictor in this regression equation. So the, the um, conclusions you would come to for this would be the same as this. See, these are the same the predictor and the overall. Again, if we were doing multiple regression and we had multiple predictors, so let's say that we added extra version to this as well, then these wouldn't be the same and you'd be able to see which specific predictors are significant predictors of our dependent variable or sales in this case. So that gives you everything that you need to complete this lab assignment using Microsoft Excel.